um, data is generated. And, and that happens at a faster pace than ever before. But as Mike very well pointed out at the end of his excellent report on, on big data, the challenge today is extracting knowledge out of all that data. And today I'm going to talk to you about three ways in which technology can help us extract knowledge from data. And the first one is speed. So speed is important because your data grows much faster than your business. Your data grows exponentially. And as that happens, the, the tools you use to analyze that data need to evolve as well. Um, I'm going to skim to, uh, through the maths of why the data grows faster, but it depends on the complexity in your business. So the more variables you have in your business, the more data you will generate. And that's just natural. So you can see that as a business grows, it, it generates a lot more data very quickly. Now, cloud is often pegged as the solution to this problem. Um, but you might wonder, is cloud really going to be faster than just working with a file on my own laptop? And the best way to see this is to, to, to go through an example. Uh, the technologies that are uh, used in the cloud to make this possible, I'm listing some of them here. This is what we use in other companies like us. Um, and these really enable much bigger speeds in the cloud. So let's look at a 30 second video. I'd like you to imagine how this would look in Excel. And keep in mind that the data behind this is 100,000 lines. So imagine an Excel file with 100,000 lines. And we're looking at January sales. Uh, in value, uh, we rank products by growth contribution. We zoom on Mellon because that's the biggest one. We look at varieties. We check the market split. Everything seems in order. Sales managers, again, we look at growth contribution quickly. All good. We'll zoom out a bit, look at all the products, and I can already see we have a problem. So one of the sales managers is down. I'm calling Stephen now, and as I, as I do, while the phone is ringing, I'm going to check his customer base, and I can see that one of his customers is down. 30 seconds, I know what requires my immediate attention. You can imagine how long this would take in, in, in Excel. Right, and this is something that happens every day. Um, if you haven't looked at cloud yet, I, I encourage you to, do, to look at cloud options. There are many solutions out there, great value for money that can save you a lot of time. So if you want to extract knowledge faster, consider cloud. The second point is, the second point is, is, is virtual assistants. You've all seen these names here in, uh, uh, in green. I think I need to get closer to the right. So you've all seen these names. What we find fascinating is the technology behind them and, and, and the opportunities that this technology opens up. What this means for you <laughs> is that you can now get very specialized solutions at a very, very low cost. And I'll give you an example, and the example is Saga. Now, Saga is a virtual colleague of ours, and Saga is good at doing one thing and, and doing it very well, which is to give you answers from your data. And this is how it works. Let's imagine I'm in the warehouse, I see some big stocks of melon, and I want to know what were the sales of melon last week. So I'm gonna pick up my phone and write an email to Saga because that's pretty natural. I don't want to go into charts, I just want the answer. And we timed it, it takes about 15 seconds to write an email like this. Of course, you know, you can write much more complicated um, subject lines in there. It takes Saga about 10 seconds to reply, so three, two, one, boom. Now the answer to my question is in the subject, so it's 105,000 euro, it's declining versus last year, and then in the body of the email, I have answers to the questions I might ask, like here's your ranking by customers, is your ranking by suppliers, by varieties, and so on. So this means that Saga can answer your question faster than you can ask the question. Right. 15 seconds to ask the question, 10 seconds to, uh, to answer. You, know, you can hire a virtual analyst today. The last point I want to talk about is forecasting. And the underlying thought is, you're looking at all this data that you're amassing and you think there must be a lot of value in it. And we get this a lot from customers, but how do I get it out? And that's the role of forecasting. Now, forecasting, a basic forecast example looks something like this. I'm sure you must have seen it. You get some actual data, which is the line, and then you produce a forecast. This is a very simple breakdown. You can see it's two lines of code. This is very, very basic. But that's the basic uh, idea. You identify patterns in your data, use them to predict the future. I'll, I'll map out the solutions that are there for you. There's a solution for every budget. 
Um, first, it's, it's worth trying to get it right in Excel, especially the Windows version has a dedicated tab. Charts like the one you saw, you've seen before, you can do them straight in Excel. It's really easy. If the basic models are no longer enough, then you'll need a more complex one, and you have two options there. You can outsource that work to a company like us, or you can run a Kaggle competition. And if you want maximum control, then you can hire your own team of data scientists. They will use the same tools we use, but they will be in-house. Does that make sense? So you know, the, the, the third point is, is forecasting, and that is a way to extract the gold hidden in your data. All right? And I'll give you the f final example. There's no video here. It's just two bars. And the bars represent the, the mean absolute percentage error, which is a key metric in forecast accuracy. Uh, shorter bar is, is better. We're looking at a manual forecast of, uh, and the automated forecast. This is uh, a strawberry yield um, forecasting project we did for a, for a customer in the UK last year. We have a 35% reduction in, for, in um, forecast error. You can imagine what that does to uh, workforce planning, uh, sales planning, and, and um, waste reduction. So these are three ways in which you can extract more knowledge from your data. Um, I wish you a successful Fruit Logistica. The slides are on our website if you want. Thank you very much. Thank you.